Hi, this is Sister Melik, and today we're going to spend a couple of minutes learning about research logs. And research logs, as you'll find, seem to be the dreaded evil topic. What is a research log? According to the Family Search Wiki, a research log is a comprehensive list of sources that you've already searched or that you're planning to search for a particular person or family. So why would I want to use a research log? You want to use a research log because you want to cite your sources to prove that you are doing quality work. You can sort out what you found and what you're still looking for. It can help you be organized. It can show you some questions that arise and it reduces the duplication and the number of times you spin your wheels. Research logs can contain many different things, but most all of them contain a basic um, ancestor's name and the years, date of search, place of search, objective, call number, websites, source description, scope of search, a document numbering system that you use in your filing system because it's important to be able to find it again, and the results. Here's an example of a research log, and this came from the Family Search Wiki. The name that they're researching right here is Taylor Mann, up here at the top, and they have added the ID number from Family Search. And what we have, we have on the date, they researched this on, December, on September 24th. Here's the call number. Just look at the top. The Imperial Gazetteer is what they looked in, right here, Volume 3. What they were looking for, they were looking for a town called Hazelbrow. And the results, no Hazelbrow is listed. And so their document or reference, this is where they put their reference if they find something. Or you can put a slash mark through it or nil or anything that will let you know that, okay, I have looked at this resource and I don't have to do it again. Now we look at the second one, they went to a website. We have the, the um, address of the website and they're still looking for Hazelbrow. And in this one, the result it says it found as of the 24th of September. Here's the link and this is really important because sometimes links do get broken. So we know that this link as of the 24th of September was a viable link and this is what they found. And as you can look through, they looked at a various um, assortment of um, different different sources and then if you come down here you can you can see that they found some notes and right here it says note need to find Lucius and Charlotte in 1861 and 1871 you want to write yourself notes as you go along so that you don't have to guess what you were thinking also it's important with research logs sometimes you don't pick it up you know, you may go six months and you won't um, do anything with it and all of a sudden you look at it and think, well, I'm not quite sure where I was heading with that, so you start all over again. So that's why a research log and writing notes, any kind of funny notes to yourself, um, is very important. Okay, you can also make up your own logs. You can, um, maybe there's something specific that you find in... Um, in certain records that you're researching maybe for a particular country. So maybe what you want to do is you want to um, make a spreadsheet that has the basics, the date, the name that you're researching, the years, but maybe you want to put a column in for that specific um, source or bit of information that is um, particular to that country. You can also find blank logs if you're one of those that doesn't want to create your own research log. You can find, find blank research logs. Just Google genealogy research logs and then choose the one that you like best. Um, also you can download blank ones from Family Search Wiki, from Ancestry. So there's lots of different places to get blank logs. Now one thing that w internet has been really good at helping us do, we can find things relatively quickly, but we can also get sidetracked very quickly. So this is where you really want to keep track of your crazy clicking. Make sure that when you start clicking links all over the place that you take the time to write them down or cut and paste them into a Word document where you've been so you don't keep revisiting where you've already been. It may seem tedious, but it will actually save you money, I mean save you time in the long run. So here's an idea. I started with this when I started looking for this Gertrude Burdick and my first place I started that I found a link I started at deadfred.com and this is the link that I found 
and the very top one and so I I cut and pasted that onto my my Word document and then in a different color I put information what exactly I got and then there just happened to be a link on the first on the first um, page that I was on a link to the second one and so I clicked on that and I got a picture of Gertrude Burdick then I noticed another link that talked about um, Gertrude, Gertrude Burdick and so I clicked on another link that just happened to be this museum link and when I got to it it's I um, found that it said descendants of William Nichols but it mentioned a Gertrude Burdick so that's why you want to keep track if you just go from pillar to post you won't know what you have hit so at least cut and paste the URLs and have a date on it and put some information so you can actually show what you what what kind of path you were following to learn more much of this information came from family search wiki but there are a couple of great research um, log videos that the family history center has prepared the family history library in salt lake and to access these research log trainings they're about there's two of them they're about 20 minutes a piece you go to FamilySearch.org, click on the library tab at the top, then click on education in the drop down box, click on the research classes outline or online, scroll to the bottom of the list, and click on research logs part one and two. And it's about three quarters of the way down on the list. Good luck and happy logging.